Get us started, Ted. Let's do this. Oh, everybody's afraid of giving away that secret sauce. If you do things the right way, your storytelling connects. That's really important. And we all have those brands that we really love because they talk to us. Like it's all about creating that like community. Like look at that gorgeous color palette. That is just from those desserts. You pull in your story and that's what really connects with people and persuades people to buy. You're gonna create a mood board. You're gonna define your brand styles and then you're gonna create a brand kit and spark. I love to start with Adobe Color. You could just search the free photos and drag and drop it around. Your color codes, you could cut and paste them here or you can just change the color and your eyedropper tools right here. Extract a gradient. You can drag that through and make that gradient file. So you would not believe how far that could get you so far in social media. Get your whole mood so when you're telling your story, every time somebody sees something, they know that it's you. And we have the return of visibility strategist, content manager, and creator, Peg Fitzpatrick. Welcome back, Peg. Hey, Courtney, it's good to see you. I have loved the series and seeing everybody's questions and comments is awesome. We're doing it. And you're yeah. back. I'm so excited. How have you been since we last left you? Was it yesterday, three weeks ago? Yesterday was know. a month ago. Does time even exist? Does it? <laughs> Do it great. Do it great. Yeah. You know what? For because I work in social media, it just continues and it's busier. It's actually busier um, for social media managers. So if you guys are social media managers, make sure you're taking some extra self-care things because um, the workload is real. <laughs> the workload is real. And then we're of course like privy to that frontline information because we're just right there online for it. So yes, yeah. take care of yourself, take breaks. Yeah. Drink water. I was just going to say the exact thing. I was like, and drink water. <laughs> I have like a fake Dunkin' Donuts. Cup. It's a, it's a, it's a not a to-go one. It's like a regular one that looks like a to-go. Oh, that's so funny. So I like, I feel like at least I have takeout coffee, you know, but it's just all from my, it's water from my house. <laughs> it, makes a difference. it makes a difference. So it today does. we're going to be chatting about the art of visual storytelling for social media. Talk to us about storytelling. It's so important. It really is. It's it's the key to everything. And it's kind of how like social media connects with other things. If you want to even look at it as like an artistic form, because all different kinds of creativity are storytelling, whether, whether you're a musician, an mm -hmm. artist, a movie maker, an actress, mm -hmm. you know, it's all creative. So when we're online as a social media manager or a small business owner, you pull in your story and that's what really connects with people and persuades people to buy. You know, the stories are what really pull you in. And we all have those brands that we really love because they talk to us, like their messaging talks to us. They're, every time they speak to you, it feels like it's exactly to you. It's like, you love when you do something and people say it's exactly, um, you were talking to me today. Like, even if it's just like putting up a quote on your Instagram and someone said, I really needed to hear that today. Like if you do things the right way, your storytelling connects really deeply with your audience. And that's really important. So I'm excited to share some insights about that. <laughs> yes, please share. I'm so excited to hear about this. It's, it, it makes the difference when you are talking to a brand or when you're reacting to a brand online and they've given you a very clear beginning, middle, and hopefully they never end, right? But you have right. the idea of their overall story arc and how they came to be up till the moment till you found them. Right. And then, and then that's all that matters because then you have that relationship with them. And, and a lot of times that relationship can be the sale, you know? Yeah, um, and and in, in an example of that, before I dive into my little price presentation is, um, there is a nail salon in LA called Olive and June. Do you know Olive and June? No, I don't know Olive and June, but I need Oh my gosh, you're going to die when you see their stuff, Courtney. So they are a nail salon and they have a brand of nail polish and they are like seven free nail polishes. So it's the ones that are better for you and healthier. They oh. don't have all the harsh chemicals, but they're like a gel polish. So that's oh. the product part, but they are, since they're a nail salon, everything is closed for them, right? So they have had a couple months of everything being closed, which is so harsh for a small business. But what they did was they brought it all online, Courtney, and they have been doing like every day, they did a Manny boot camp, So you could go and learn how to like do your nails. And I think I know how to do my nails pretty well, but I learned a lot. So it's, it was a great way of like 
every day they share like great things. They have partnered with tons of different brands like Lauren Conrad and mm -hmm. um, like big brands. Like they, have, they know like a lot of celebrities go to them. They're, I think, I think it's a super bougie LA salon that, you know, they're like really cool. But what they've done is created an online experience that has led to tons of sales. Right. And then as soon as business does get to reopen, guess where we're all going to be. Right. Right. I, I would totally, if I was local, I would be like, sign me up that first week. But as it is, they have showed everybody how to do their nails at home, which is one of the things that small businesses and people who are brands or anybody, everybody's afraid of giving away that secret sauce. Like if I tell you how to do your nails, you're not going to come in again, like, or, you know, social media, you know, if I teach you how to do everything I know, then you won't need me to do it. Like those kind of things. But the reality is when you're really good at something, someone's still going to come and get their nails done, or they're going to buy the bread from you or whatever it is. Right. So it's, it's all about creating that like community. And they did that because people were kind of like hair and nails, like people are freaking out because they can't get to the salon. They did a, they did a series on like, they did a thing on like how to take off your acrylic and gel nails because people, I know. Like, yeah, they got was, caught with their stuff. Like they couldn't, they couldn't re-up like they normally do. Right. So it was really like a creative way to, and they use their stories in there. They talk about how they do it. They talk about their products and it's never a hard sell. They I mean, they share the stuff, but it was like the perfect blend of like, oh my gosh, how do I deal with my business being closed? Mm -hmm. to how do I reach people? So um, I'll dive into my presentation and okay. talk about storytelling a little bit. But that's just like one example of how this can really help you in this unique situation that we're in. This unique situation, where we all have to think differently to move forward. Like we have to figure out how to move forward from here, where we are right now. Like I'm sick, I'm sick as you are. I know of so many buzzwords and phrases, but it's life now. Like we have to just, we're going to, we're going to make it. And this is how we're going to do it. So you're going to think outside of the box with your visual storytelling, and it's going to help a lot. Get so, us started, Pat. Let's do this. Boom. I'm going to dive into my presentation here. Amazing. And as usual, guys, if you guys have any questions, comments, I'll be here online fielding those and moderating those for Peg. Take it away. Okay. And I can share this too later if anybody wants to download it. I just made, you, is it good now? You're, it's up and we're good? You are up and good. Okay, cool. So the art of visual storytelling is just so important because even just looking at this, the total cliche a picture is worth a thousand words, but there's so much more in there. There's like a whole mood in this one little photo and you get so much just from this. Like she's got cute nail polish on. She's obviously in something that's somewhere sunny and beautiful because there's like little dappled sunlight. I love everything about if you choose the right images and it really does help tell your story. Whoops, sorry, I got to it's not letting me go here. There we go. So um, Courtney already told you who I am. I'm Peggy Fitzpatrick, Peg Fitzpatrick online. Um, and I wrote The Art of Social Media with Guy Kawasaki. And I have been working online for ooh, almost 10 years, which seems like so long for social media. Um, and I'm going to talk about stories today and why we love stories. And this photo is an example of something that's just really pretty. But also, if there's a whole story behind it. It could be a hundred different stories. Um, it could be that someone's going to buy flowers for someone and they stumble upon this. But the story of this is that I was in Paris. I was walking along the street. It was just this cute little neighborhood. And there was these beautiful flowers that were outside with a little sign. And I just like that like speaks to me. I, no matter where I am, like flowers outside a little market is just so special to me. And just looking at that, like it's one photo, but that can be a whole story. That could be a whole blog design. That could be a whole brand. Like if you have something that you love and there's something really cool about nature is that the color is just always match. These are all individual colored roses, but you could take something in that image and do four colors from it, three colors, two colors with a white and a black. There's so many different ways to remix the visuals to tell the story. So the story of that is that is just, that's actually a picture I just took on the street um, that I love. Um, looking for images, I actually found things that I took. Um, and stories connect us with other people in the world and um, cats. I don't know what it is about cats. I have, I have a little dog. I love cats too, but our pets really connect us. Like, especially now when we're all home, like sharing other people, seeing people's cats, cat videos are like always one of the most popular things um, on YouTube, like cat videos. Why are they so popular? Because they connect us. They're interesting and they're entertaining. It's, 
it's just a really cool way to do it. And storytellers hold our interest. People who can tell a good story. Wow. Like I said before, whether it's, um, you know, somebody who's creating social media posts, whether it's someone who's writing a movie and if they write it, they direct it and they do all the pieces of it. It really shows like every piece of the movie. And I'm going to give you guys a couple examples for that. And they, stories give us inspiration and hope. And every week, I don't know about you, Courtney, but I can't wait for John Krasinski's um, videos to come out. Are you watching him? No, what's what? Oh my God, I have to share him. Some good news. He's made this video show every week and it's all inspirational stories. It's just happy news to counterbalance. Oh, I did hear about this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so good. Last week he did a um, graduation theme and he had all these people who are graduating. Some were like preschool, some were like middle school, some were college. Some were, he had like the poet laureate, um, like the young poet laureate of, I don't even remember what, she's just like amazing. Um, and he, he brought on people to connect with them who were like their heroes. So there was someone who was a young film student and he had Steven Spielberg come on and give him advice. Oh my gosh. Like, do you get chills from that? Cause yeah. what if your hero gave you advice? And it's that kind of like these stories give people hope and every week it makes me cry. I'm like, I'm gonna watch it but I'm not gonna cry this week. And every week I'm like, oh my God, that's like, and it's always happy. It's the things that we need to know. like there are things like we've been through things, we can do things. And um, the girl that was the poet who was just, she she wrote a, a beautiful poem. Oprah came on and gave her some advice. Oh Oprah. my God. She did a Zoom call with Oprah for her graduation. And he put that together and every week it's inspiration and hope. So it's the stories like, you know, we, hello. There you are. Okay. Um, okay, so the first thing you see with this photo is a cute little dog, right? But then if you look out, he has just trashed their toilet paper stash. Like that connects us. It's funny. It's not funny. That's one of those funny, not funny stories. Like, hey, cute dog. Oh, can you hear me, Courtney? Yes. Okay. I just got a little message popped up about my inter my internet. Um, and it also generates conversation. So stories can help us, you know, open-ended questions, asking questions, sharing things. You know, if you were a florist, you could be doing um, demonstrations on how to put floral arrangements together. And I would be a hundred percent there to watch that because it's not as easy as it looks to do that. Exactly. Pardon me? I said, exactly. <laughs> I can never do them. They never look that good. Um, and they also hold our interest. So like, this could be the beginning of a story. Like, okay, you see some spray painting behind there, but what's going to happen? Like, is this somebody who was hired to do this? Are they like just rogue going out and doing some art like fancy? What's the story behind this going to be? So everything is a story and it start, can start with something as small as just a photo. So I want to talk to you about how you can create your own style for storytelling. I'm going to give you two really amazing examples of storytellers from movies. I love movies. Do you love movies, Courtney? I'm an actress. Are you kidding me? It's in my life. Right? I, do, I knew you did. <laughs> but everybody, like everybody... There's hardly any people that you meet that don't love movies. There's so right. many different genres and they, they take us somewhere else. They're interesting. They make us laugh. They make us cry. They do everything. If it's a really good movie, you can do all those things at once. Mm -hmm. um, and then if my husband's watching it, he wants to see a couple people maybe get shot or something. <laughs> <laughs> he would be like, you know, the, the good fellas and Godfather kind of deal. <laughs> um, but those are good, those are good stories and they're told really well. Um, so one of the like renowned, like most amazing storytellers is oh, Wes Anderson. Anderson. Did, all those did, did I lose you again? Nope, that was my bad. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, so anyway, Wes Anderson is an amazing storyteller. He always, he writes his movies, he directs them. He is like the most detailed oriented. And so this is um, a shot from Grand Budapest Hotel. And everything in his movies from A to Z is just so well branded and so well done. He's done other things like I Love Dogs, um, God, I'm totally, Mo Moonrise Kingdom, I'm totally blanking. Oh yeah, The uh, Royal Tenenbaums was like one of the first movies that I saw of his, um, The Darjeeling Limited. Yeah. I'm person fan <laughs> yeah and everyone is like has it's a whole world it's not just like a movie that and he's got another one coming out that I'm dying to see that's like set in Paris about a news um a newspaper um and they're moving it up to I think they're moving it to July 
I'm not really sure, but anyway, he's just amazing as far as all the details. So taking something like this photo and what he did with it, you can pull that photo into Adobe Color. And I was telling Courtney earlier, um, one of the things I love about Adobe is that it's like a choose your own adventure. We're talking about Spark, but there's so many different products in Adobe that you can pull in together to create the project that you wanna create for your own storytelling. So I love to start with Adobe Color because I find an inspiration picture and then I pull it in here to get the exact colors that I'm looking for. And that's what I did for my blog, my last iteration of my blog, which I love. Like every time I go there, it makes me happy because it was a photo that I absolutely loved. And I pulled the colors that I, you know, that I loved. And so I love it. It's great. I, the, I love the font. Sometimes, you know, you have to tweak things to get it where you want it. But this is just an example of pulling it in and then when you're, this is not live on Adobe Color, but you can move these little dots around and it gives you the colors so you can drag and drop it around. So this is just um, pulling some colors and then you can get all the color codes for that and cut and paste them into Spark. Um, and you can also save them and it will pull it into your other projects like Photoshop or anything else. Um, there's a new feature, Courtney, have you seen the gradient feature that I just found in there, the extract a gradient? You can drag that through and make that great gradient file and then you can download that. Um, but again, you could just use these three colors and you could do as many stops as you want. There's a lot of different ways to use it. And there's so many different colors just in this one photo that you could choose. You could make it really light or darker um, or not focus just on, you could focus only on pink. Um, and another um, storyteller that I love is Nancy Myers. And she's somebody who I love and a lot of people don't know her name is a writer, is a screenwriter, but everybody knows her movies, Parent Trap, Father of the Bride, um, she just did the intern, which I love the intern with um, Anne Hathaway and Robert De Niro. And then this one is from Home Again, a movie that she did with her daughter. And one of the cool things about Nancy Meyers' house is that people are like obsessed with the kitchens in her houses. Mm -hmm. um, you, do you know what I'm talking about? Something got to yeah. give. So, I was just going to say, give. something's got to give. I watched that because I want to be in that vacation home in the Hamptons because it just... Right? So and, cool. it's, and it's the whole it's the whole house the whole every single part of it has the vibe and if you didn't really know you would think okay well it's a movie they probably just go to someone's house and use the house and it's like all the stuff in the house but that's not how it works they do a lot of work with set designers and producer like there's so many things like all these things are props in this photo so what nancy myers did specifically for this movie with her daughter is and the intern actually is she used pinterest and she pinned things that um, she wanted to be in the house. And the intern she has right now on her Pinterest still has the intern up there. If you go and look at that and then watch the movie, you'll see the font inspiration for the company name. You'll see hairstyles that Anne Hathaway wears. You'll see clothes that she wears. You'll see what Robert De Niro's house looks like. And there's actual elements because what she did was then she took that and she gave it to her set designer and they used all of it and made it like they recreated her world. So it's really cool. And then everything she does is like written up in um, Architectural Digest magazine. And she actually shared on her um, Instagram a couple of weeks ago, her actual kitchen, which is three times nicer than the something's got to give kitchen. And people are like, what is this world? She has two huge islands in her kitchen. And like, yeah, two, it's, it's amazing. So it's cool because she's also like Wes, very detail oriented. And she likes everything about her character to be um, part of this. So if we take this photo and we throw this into Adobe Color, you can create a whole bunch of different color palettes. This one, if you notice on the side, there's colorful, colorful, excuse me, bright, muted, deep. It'll select for you, or you can again, check. These are ones that they pick for you. So this is a bright color palette. And then this one is a muted. You can see there's only a little bit of difference because she has a very neutral color palette with just a couple little pinks in there. And then there's also a few little pops of blue. Those are not an accident. Everything is chosen and, and selected. But look what a great color palette you can get just from that one photo. And then of course you can go and you can do that little gradient that little gradient tool as well. So this just gives you an idea of how you can like 
start telling your story. And then you can create a mood board, which I'm going to show you guys how to do right in Adobe Spark. I made this right in Spark, pulling in the image, and then I did some colors on there and pulled God, them that's in. gorgeous. Isn't that cute? Those are just colors from that. That would that was just an example of like if it was a little tea, a little tea cafe kind of thing. So your visual storytelling strategy for this little project, you're going to create a mood board, which I'll show you in Adobe Spark. You're going to define your brand style. So you're going to come up with a name for it. So you know the elements that you're going to have in it. And then you're going to create a brand kit in Spark. And I'm not going to go through that because some of the other live series have shown how to do that, but it's very, very easy to do. And then you're going to create a collection of photos for, you, for your campaign or brand. So first I was like kind of looking at a little bakery idea, um, but then I decided to go with like a pastel. So I'm going to stop this share. And I am going to hop over to my desktop and get into, let's see if we can get to, I want to type in um, Adobe Spark, if you're looking for this, mood board. Can you see now, Courtney? Do you have my desktop? Yes, I have your desktop. Okay, so um, when you search for Adobe Spark mood board, there's this great article that talks about how to do it but we're gonna just hop right in and it's gonna take you right into Spark, which is really cool. And then there's gonna be like a little prompt for it. So you can select a size and I'm gonna choose a poster. And then if you're not, if you don't have any assets at all, you could just search the free photos or if you've already created your little color catalog of photos, um, you can just select some photos and then you can open it. It's gonna pull them in for you. It's so fast and easy. It's like, is this like magic, Courtney? How fast you can do this mood board? It's literally magical, Spark. And so it's pulling all the images and it's gonna give you choices on your mood board. So, um, so some of the ones are just photo text on it, but there's also, I love to do the ones that have like little colors on them, like this kind that have the little color palettes on there because it's so nice to see your actual colors when you're creating your little um, storytelling board. So this right here is a really cute little mood board. And then you can just go in if you, you want to replace your photos to put your little, um, your photos that you chose. You can upload your photos again. We will choose some little pastels. Now you can choose if you want to pin it to the background or move freely and I'm going to pin it so it goes right into that and stays in that little spot. Oh, that ended up back. I don't like that. I'm going to undo that. I wanted it in here. So then I'm going to replace that and then it's really easy to just go through these steps and upload, add your images. I'm going to I'll do move freely as so that goes in there. That might go in the back too. Wait, don't do it. Okay, there we go. So then you can change your fonts if you've already chosen your fonts or you could do some exploring right here and find some. You can click on them, you can change it. My, my internet seems like it's delaying a little but it's really easy just to go through and find the colors that you want. If you already have your color codes that you created from the last step from Adobe Color, you could cut and paste them here or you can just go to color and you can change the color and your eyedropper tools right here. So you could just click right there and grab some little colors to make your little, probably those have a name and a color palette, but they're just kind of like, your, they're your brand colors after this. So say you're gonna exactly go from that cute little palette. How cute is that? There's my other ones. I'm gonna move this photo over here, which is super easy to drag and drop because I want my other little color dots there. So this just gives you something to work with and you could go, you could grab images from Pinterest. You could, um, you know, you can't legally use images from Pinterest for projects out there in the world. But if you're just kind of gathering ideas, it's totally fine to borrow them. You're not gonna be publishing this anyway, any place. So it's just kind of for you. Um, so that just kind of gives you an idea how to change those colors. You can rename everything, change everything, and then you're gonna save this and you're gonna use this 
or your stories. And you want to give yourself a whole like theme for everything. You want it to have like, you know, you, you would name this if you were going to name your cafe. Let me see if I can go into my other little one that I created. So you can see how, isn't it like ridiculously easy, Courtney, just to pull everything in? I'm so inspired right now because I'll, I mean, continue on, but I'm just thinking about like, I think about my brand just as, you know, Courtney and there right. are some colors that I love, but they don't necessarily go together once they're out on the page, What just because right. I like them. And it right. seems like a great idea to do this, to do this where I probably would go onto Pinterest. And it's amazing to hear that Nancy Myers basically has the same process as all of us to go right? to Pinterest, find what inspires you and hand it off to somebody else and say, Hey, can you make this come to life for me? Right. But it, it lets you, once you start in that process, it really gives you a feel for something. So this is just another little example that I just did a little pastel cafe with macarons and then the colors, like look at that gorgeous color palette that is just from those desserts. And those so are icons, right? The dots. Cause I see we have mood boards that you can have it be a grid. The color palettes can be in different shapes. Yeah. It's like the circles are, yeah. Look at all those different ways to have them. Yeah. Board. There's, there's a ton. I just like the ones with the colors when I'm doing this specific thing, mm -hmm. but you can click on any of them like, and make it totally different. It doesn't have to look like this at all. You could have one that's just images. You just click on it and it changes it for you. Wow. You can, there's a million different choices of what you want that to look like. So you can make it fit your brand perfectly. Change the fonts to your fonts, get your whole mood. So when you're telling your story, every time somebody sees something, from you, they know that it's you. Like for Courtney, she's an actress. She can make little mood boards of like, say for example, you know you're auditioning for something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop my screen share. So say you're um you are auditioning and you want to come up with like a character for this part, which is one of the things that Nancy did on her boards, which is cool. So you could just be like, okay, this is the the character, it's Susie. She is this. You go on Pinterest, you pin all the pieces of it. You know, she's from Atlanta. She always wears a bow in her hair. She, you know, her, she has a quirky way that she always like, just come up with her character. It could be nothing that's anywhere else, but for you, all those things that tell you your character are going to like inform every choice that you're making, what you're going to wear, how you're going to do your hair, what your accent's going to be, all those different pieces. So there's a million different ways to use this, whether you're a small florist in a local town and you want to get people to come in and people are not buying bouquets right now is after mother's day people probably did then but like we're all like a little shell shock house plants are like the thing right now everybody is obsessed with just surrounding ourselves with like fresh air and greenery and and it's in our house so um so you could do like house plants you could do a series on like how to take care of house plants and you could tell a story about different plants what light they go in why do you want a southern window what's the difference between a southern and a northern window like every different business has a way to tell a story and it's really just a matter of you you know anytime you're going to sell yourself your brand your blog your small business you need to know what all those pieces are that are your story so i want you to think like a wes anderson or a nancy myers and just really dig into like every piece of who you are because when you know those things you are going to be so authentic and real and everything that you do and people are really going to connect with it and it's going to be amazing. And you also, it helps you make decisions faster about everything else you do. When you have your brand kit done in your fonts and, and you have a whole library of 20 to 30 photos, you would not believe how far that could get you so far in social media, remixing them, moving them, styling them differently. You don't need to have like unlimited everything. You can do things really honed in and really inexpensively in Adobe Spark, you could do it for free with all the photos that are in there. Um, so think about how you can really dive in to be your own authentic brand, create a mood board for your small business, for your blog, whatever it is that you're doing, so you can really be tied into your choices. Um, it's kind of like creating an outfit, you know, you're pulling that, you know, one piece and then you match everything else else to it. It's kind of like that, like designing a room is kind of the same way. A lot of the different things that we think are so different are really so similar, like Nancy Myers using Pinterest to, you know, create a whole thing. Diane Keaton used 
Pinterest a hundred percent to design her whole house. And then she wrote a book called the house that Pinterest ah. built. And then Pinterest had her come and speak because she's a huge Pinterest fan. So it's really cool. Like, like celebrities, they're just like us, right? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like forget that. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. true what you're saying about, I mean, it's funny you described that process for actors. Like whenever I'm getting headshots done, I go straight to mood boards, straight to Pinterest. Right. And, you know, even as simple as an outfit, like dressing up is actually my favorite part about the acting process, but mm -hmm. it's because that is part of the story that I'm telling down to the color, down to the cut, it makes a huge difference. And it puts less on me to verbally communicate. And those are those right. nonverbal cues that people pick up. And it just helps me tell what my story, the story of the character, and that can be the same process for anyone listening today. Right. It, whether it's, it's, it's like amazing how this translates to so many things, because it's big figuring out who you are, what you're trying to translate. And then all the visual pieces really do, you know, they do say a lot about your company and looking at Adobe, there's like a million different logos in the company, but they're all tied together because they're all like the same shape, but then they have their own color and their own. So obviously someone put a lot of thought into that. That was not random. Yes. You know? not, at not at all. So eat, but the best things look like they're just like a cute, like, oh, look at Spark. It looks like a little, you know, but that's, I hope people will try this and um, I'll share the link or court, you know, I, I'll go in and share the links to stuff. Um, so you guys can look at the mood boards that I made. I'll put a link in there. And then also just finding that um, the Adobe mood boards. I don't know if you guys have tried those, but if you can make one and just, it's so fun. It's, it's so quick fun. and so fun. Um, and it will help inform all your choices. And it'll get you boosted engagement. I mean, just the grid work alone, I've noticed on Twitter, like when you have maybe four pictures on your post and it comes together as a nice little grid that yep. gets higher engagement as well. So yeah. you start to plot that a little bit more strategically with your brand colors or what are you communicating? Some people are using those as actual story panels sometime and maybe you have an yep. error that communicates to the next panel. So there's yeah. a lot of options out here. Obviously Pinterest goes without saying that, you know, you could take off your, you know, you could make one great mood board that you liked. And then if you're a baker or like a, foodie blogger or even foodie blogger or somebody who's making recipes, you can put the steps to make something in there. You could put the ingredients to make something in there. Crafting, obviously the steps. So there's so many different ways that you can use the mood boards. They're not just one thing either. So I'm going back to what you said earlier about like sometimes people do get hesitant to share their knowledge and their expertise because you're like, well, if you know it, why would you come to me? And right. there's a great quote that I found on, I don't I forget who said it. If somebody can remind me who said this quote, but they basically said, I could give you the recipe, but the sauce still may not taste the same. Right. And that's how it is with sure. business and your area of expertise. Like great that you're sharing it, but at the end of the day, people still want that extra X factor that you bring to it. Yes. We all have that little X factor and you, and that's, you know, part of knowing who you are, right. Is that you can add that, that extra zest to something, the, you know, using the right emojis and hashtags to tie together the message. Yes. Oh. I'm always surprised at how many people don't understand how they truly are an expert in their worlds and that we don't all overlap. And so everyone has something to share and something to add to this cultural narrative that, I mean, right now is a great example, right? Like everyone has probably an area that they can tell us about you know, being in quarantine or what they're experiencing that we may not know about. Even if I have all of my skill sets and intelligence, like I don't have your perspective. And so that's right. what you can add as a storyteller. Yeah, definitely. There's so many different things. And then there's a lot of different companies. Like if you think about brands that we like to follow on social, like Olive and June was one that I shared. Mm -hmm. um, Dry Bar is another one that I love that shares, like they share tutorials on how to hundred percent do their hairstyles. Wow. what products to use, how to do the blowout, like just stuff like that, like share how to do it or mm -hmm. in a, in a really creative way, think of how you can tell the story. Um, the New York times is, as a brand who obviously they're a newspaper. We all know they're a hard copy newspaper. They've translated their online presence with really great, like immersive visuals that are like when they do, have you gone on any of their interactive stories where they have like pictures that pull in and stuff? Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's so good. There's, and that's what they, they have to do. They're adapting in the wild because they need people to go to their website because people aren't buying papers anymore. 
Exactly. And they're doing a great job. I just remember seeing a commercial of theirs and it just hit on everything that we've seen trending on Twitter lately. It was just, it was them telling me back the story of everything that I had been reading about and they summarized it in such a way that it was, you know, the New York Times way of adding to the story now, adding to the narrative. And that's a whole switch because, you know, five years ago, who would have thought that they would ever even do that? That everybody would just say newspapers are dead. Newspapers are dead. Newspapers aren't dead. They are evolving and they're, they're creating even better experiences for us by summarizing all the craziness. It's so the newspaper is one physical medium, but the stories never went anywhere. The storytellers never went anywhere. So all they're, all they're doing is pivoting the platform by which they're communicating. Yeah. Yeah. And visuals are a huge piece of that. National Geographic has always been like about the pictures, the photo essays, like amazing work and now you can see that online nasa is one of my favorite brands i love following them on social media oh my god awesome yeah and i'm, I'm not them for a challenge last year but yeah they're just they're they're goals they're big social yeah. media goals if you look yeah and, and in, on paper you would say well why would nasa even be on social media why is that even you know like pictures. but they're the best they have the best pictures, literally out of this world pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this time always goes so quickly. I'm always amazed. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't have any questions or comments, so now is your final chance to do so. If you have any pressing questions for Peggy here. But yeah. I to see you all. Thank you all for sharing and retweeting and liking. We see all of those and we appreciate you. So yeah. I'll check back on the Facebook page for questions and comments and I'll add some stuff on there that you guys can look at. And I think, can I do remixable links if I share it? Yes, you can make a remixable or it may be called a shareable link. In okay, I will do a shareable link for you guys for a couple of the ones that I created so you can play with them. Excellent, thank you so much, Peg. This was amazing, yeah. how fun. It was super fun. Okay, well, we'll talk to you again soon. I know we're not done yet. Yeah. So we'll talk to you Yay. soon. Okay, okay. well, thank you for watching everybody. And thank you all for watching, bye. Bye, Courtney. Bye.